So a brief history about the wireless module I gave to you. I think it's pretty easy to use. You don't have to use a Bluetooth version. I have a lot of Bluetooth modules, but I don't think it's necessary. I think the ones you have, they are literally just a, a 2.4 gigahertz wireless signal converted to serial protocol, RXTX. You don't even need to know the protocol because every so the digital chip on the on the module does everything for you. That's why this is this is a digital world. Right? It's so sweet. And the code to receive or send a signal, more no more than five lines. <laughs> Very easy. What you need to do is just plug in and play. So uh, yeah, let me tell you where that comes from, okay? So this guy, I mentioned that, so, so this website to you uh, at the very beginning of this semester. So this guy invented this uh, balancing robot car. Oh, sorry. I should uh, duplicate it, not extending that. Okay, so the link to this website can be found on the on my website and on the balancing cars tutorial. Go to this link and scroll down. You can see this balancing car part one, part two. So I, I believe I have links at the bottom of the page, uh, so you can find out this this website from the Netherlands. This guy, um, and he used a joystick module, which is different from us. From ours, and he used this wireless module. Um, it's three something dollars. So I click that link and get into here. Uh, it's being made in China so from this company. It takes a month to be shipped and arrive here in the U.S. So I highly not recommend it. You purchase one of these in the future. So you'll receive it after you graduate, probably. Don't do that. Uh, but I already received most of them, so which is fine. Three point something dollars is not really inexpensive. It's just average. I think the wireless modules also made in China. They the same cost. No significant difference. Right, but I don't know why this guy uses this module. Uh, this doesn't even have a brand on it. Uh, it's a PCB board. Uh, so they designed the wireless transmission antenna on the PCB board, just copper wires, actually, so that's the antenna. And you can see there are some, um, so that's, uh, I think that's that's a 2.4 gigahertz wireless to serial converter. So anything being received by this antenna will be converted into a serial signal, RXTX, right? can directly be interfaced with your laptop. And you can see signals from a serial monitor. You have done this for many times, right? It's done by this chip. It's made by ST. And we're going to use one of the ST's 32-bit microcontrollers in 351 in the end of semester. But this chip is made by ST. So this company just uh, fabricated or designed a circuit board to put this chip on the board and make it work. Okay, that's what they they did. Um, so that's what, what we have, and no data sheet, <laughs> nothing. I was trying to find out the data sheet, nothing. Okay, so I give up. Uh, but it's because it's pretty easy to use, I guess. That's why they don't want to bother to put any data sheet on that. For the module, for the chip. Really? Okay. Yeah, you can do that if you like. Yeah. Um, all right, so here's the website. <clears throat> and you can see this zip folder. Download it since we're going to use part of it for a homework stream. Okay. Uh, because the entire code, uh, uh, the, the folder here, right? So if you download it and unzip, unzip it, you'll see these things. Uh, so the first two are the main 
uh, sketch you need for the balancing car. Uh, but do not, I don't recommend you directly use his code because we have a different diameter for our wheels. And I have a way simpler, a simplified version. I modify in the summer. So it's way shorter and works pretty well. And it's, it's provided on the website. Um, so I opened up these two folders and I, I saw the uh, script related to the wireless communication. Oh, before we do that, let's take a look at the hardware first. Right? Every time you, you need to see what's being connected to where before you dive into the software. So for the hardware side, So here's the joystick, and the name of the joystick is called chunk, uh, like non-chunk or something. And I think it's a commercial product that you can buy. However, it has a, so if you look at this, see this, so that's a remote sketch. That's a script you can see in their folder. It's pretty short, right? Very short. That's for the remote controller, which is a joystick. So the joystick, apparently the joystick has to be connected to a microcontroller, right? So we probably need another microcontroller for the joystick itself. Uh, but there's nothing, I don't believe, I don't know, maybe, but I didn't see there's a microcontroller inside the joystick. I think the joystick has a connector, a wire being connected to a microcontroller, but that doesn't matter. If that microcontroller is inside the joystick's package, which is this one, you know, it's just uh, one option, it doesn't matter. But I think this one doesn't have a wireless uh, tran transceiver with it, right? So that's why you need to add it to it. So the, I was trying, because I was thinking if you can directly use his code, but after I looked into the script, I found out the communication protocol there of his joystick is totally different from yours. So if you take a look here, under the first line, you'll see include wire.h. So no what? What is that? I2C, it's an I2C protocol. I mean, a joystick is sending, and the wireless module is a series. I don't know, sorry, a serial communication port, RXTX. So where, is the I2C being used? Uh, I think it's from the controller. Of, yeah, actually you are right. So the joystick must have a little control module inside. So it's a digital joystick instead of an analog one. So our joystick is an analog joystick. It's nothing but a potential meter. When you are moving this to the left, it's just simply changing the resistance. Yeah? And it's giving you two resistance reading uh, because you can see the pin. Uh, so five volts and ground, you are going to part it up and ground it. And there's a, a V or U, doesn't matter, it's RX and RY. So these two pins, it's going to give you the resistance change of the potential meter inside. So it's nothing but an analog joystick, and it's a potential meter inside. So you have to use eight, the ADC, the 10-bit ADC into your Arduino to do an analog read, right? To find out the the, volt, the voltage change. So the data uh, variation range will be from where to where. For the digital reading, if you are reading an analog voltage using ADC on your Arduino Uno, What's the digital reading you are expecting? Zero to one twenty three, uh, ten twenty three, right? Zero to ten twenty three. It's totally ten twenty four steps. It's a ten bit uh, ADC, which is uh, two to the tens, right? So, so just keep in mind whenever people tell you two to the tens, you should know it's ten twenty four. So ten twenty four steps. So it's going to be zero to ten twenty three. And that's what you are expecting uh, to get uh, from the serial monitor. You can see that number. 
Okay, you read that analog voltage from the A0, A1, you have A until A4, right? Five analog channel channels. And you can convert it into a digital number, which is in the battery form. And you can see that number in your serial monitor. So, it's a switch. Did you see that switch? It's just adding more functions to it. So if, did you see? Did you, so here, let's take a look. Let's go to see. It's a really low cost. <laughs> did you see that push button over there? <laughs> it has a bar. If you push it, it's gonna press that push button and give you a click. So that will send a pulse uh, to your Arduino. So you may have a digital read on Arduino to read the pulse. So if you read the pulse, you can you know do whatever you want, right? Just adding more functions to it. So there are totally three outputs you can you can read from this joystick um i think you just need one right for one car just need one joystick to do all the job move forward backward left or right stop stop or something whatever you want to define all these push buttons i think one will be okay and probably we are going to design a little 3d printing case uh, to contain the circuits, the R my controllers, the wireless modules into the box. So you can have a little remote controller to control your car in the future. Um, you know, but before you do anything, you need to know what's what you are getting from this guy, right? What are you getting from this? What's the signal you are being received by the mount controller? Yeah, but what are these things? stands for what what's that mean it's a resistance right it's a potential meter if you move to this side uh to the end so you are probably getting zero or 1023 right the other side should be if you got a zero here you should get a 1023 here if you got a zero here you should get a 1023 here so that's what you are expecting from this uh joystick and that carries information uh, depends on the number you are getting, so you know the speed you want to assign to the car. If you move to here, sounds like you want to turn right really quickly, right? Let the car turn right really uh, fast, so uh, you can give a command to the controller to do that job. So that's about this analog joystick. However, the one being used here is definitely a more expensive one. I don't know if that's, that's necessary. Let's see if we can get this work because we have this. We, I have a lot. I have a pr probably a hundred of these ones. <laughs> so let's use this one. Um, you know, yeah, by looking at the code. All right, where is that one? So here's a remote. <laughs> No, that's the end. It's pretty short. And I read wire.h, so I know the joystick is a digital jo joystick. So probably it's converting. It may have a potential meter as well. This already directly convert. Uh, it's going to convert the any signal, like potential meter or something, uh, to a digital signal. And that little digital chip being built in the joystick uh, that he used is going to send a digital signal to the outside world. And that digital signal is using I2C protocol. So you can directly use a microcontroller to read that I2C. And you can use your microcontroller to convert that I2C, the data being received by the I2C module, to a serial data, which is pretty simple. Just store that number into a variable and set that number to serial, like serial write. Oh, no, no, serial dot print, right? So that's that's where you can uh, send a signal to work to uh, TX. No difference. And uh, so here, serial dot begin. Because this code is written 
in Arduino IDE, so probably can expect it's going to be uploaded to the Arduino or my controller on the remote side, right? So it's a my controller controlling the remote. So this serial dot begin ninety six hundred is being used for what? To to where? To the wireless module. Okay, it's not sending anything to the monitor serial monitor on a laptop. It's the same port, so that's why it's the same command. Just defining the baud rate for the mic controller to the um, wireless module from RX TX. Just connect R RX to TX, TX to RX. That's it. But also, if you have a USB cable, you plug in the USB cable to your laptop, you are going to receive the same thing on, on both sides. You know what I mean? So the data is being sent to the wireless module, but if you have a USB plug into the laptop, you'll see that same data show up in your serial monitor. It's like same line, but it got a signal here, right, to the wireless module, but you short it to the USB as well. So it's being sent to two sides. You'll see the data, but that's not a good practice. Normally, I won't do that. Just send it to one, one part. Uh, so that's a serial function. And for, for the rest of them, they are just the configuration to the digital uh, the digital chip inside a joystick, which is handling the I2C protocol for the joystick. We don't have the data sheet for that for that module, so I don't think it's, you don't, you you need this at all. So you don't you don't need it. So this is just like uh, configuring the registers inside the joystick. Right. So now let's look at the this the loop. Wire dot. So noise I two C protocol from from where to where. Keep in mind this code is being uploaded to the Mac controller. Right. So it's running inside the Mac controller. So wire dot begin transmission is defined is trying to initiate the I2C protocol inside the microcontroller. So it's talking to, to which one? It's talking to what? To the I2Cs, the digital chip inside the joystick. Right? Because this is a, so this is the analog movement, right? So when you are moving this joystick, you know it's analog. This one doesn't have a digital chip, but however there, the Non-chunk probably has a digital chip. It's converting that analog signal into I2C signal. So this wire dot begin transmission is being executed inside the microcontroller. So it's starting the conversation between the microcontroller to the I2C chip in the joystick and trying to get the data from the the, con the, the converted data, you know, converted from the analog signal of, of the joystick. And then you know depends on the definition of the uh, inside the data sheet of the I2C uh, chip in the joystick. Um, since I don't know what are the numbers mean, they must be written in the data sheet of the I2C chip in the joystick. And it's trying to define you know all this data being sent to the wireless module. Is that clear? We're not using this code, so we don't need to know what's going on for the for the numbers here, since we don't have that module. But do you know the how this works from the really a big picture, like what's going on here? So it has a joystick has an analog signal, right? It's being sent, being converted into I2C signal inside the joystick. And you have a mic controller for that joystick. It's trying to read that analog signal, right? Actually, it's being converted into I2C already. And that one is being saved in the mic controller and being processed and being 
transfer to the wireless module through serial communication. Because serial print is going to print the data to where? The monitor. <laughs> to where? Oh, you couldn't see? To the, to the, yeah, to the, you can see Bluetooth, yeah, to the wireless module. Okay. Of course, digital. Analog, so it's like this, okay? So analog movement to digital, there's a digital module uh, convert analog to I2C. And I2C, since the same protocol compared, uh, you have the same same module in your microcontroller, so you can talk, right? So my controller will receive the I2C data and store in the variables in the microcontroller. And the microcontroller on the other side, right? So from RXTX, it's being connected to the wireless module, which is going to send the signal wirelessly to your car. So the I2C data, binary form, being stored in the memory and being transferred to the, just use a serial print. You print that data, it's being processed already, but anyway, you know, it's the data being printed to the serial port, which is RXTX, actually TX. So it's gonna send that data through TX to the wireless module. So the wireless module have a digital chip on the module, receive the data and send it wirelessly to the receiver. The receiver is definitely being connected to the microcontroller on the car. So receive the data and send a command to the wheels, to the PID controller, do whatever, okay? So that's how that works uh, from the big picture. But we have this one. So how can you make this work instead of using the I2C module, which we don't have? Because we only have an analog joystick. And if you look at the example, the joysticks example, I have a link to all the examples on the website, right? So you can check out that. So here is a rating from the serial monitor. This is a very simple example. Um, so the hardware connection is like this. So that's a hardware connection. All right. A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. So totally six analog inputs. And you can see that Rx, Ry are being shorted to A0, A1. So they are using the these two channels of the ADC controller, uh, ADC, to convert that voltage of the resistance or voltage change into a digital uh, data. And you know, ground and five volts, no problem. Just short it to the five volts and ground of the board. So switch, like you just tried out, right? Switch, you push it, you hear a click. So the switch is being shorted to a digital pin. So it's gonna be a digital read. Whenever you read that pin, you know something is gonna happen. All right, and now look at the reading. The example you can find out in the folder. You can directly download it and try it out. So whenever you see some uh, comprehensive project like this, taking baby steps. So for example, okay, if I, where do you want to start with right now? Think about it. if you haven't done this, haven't started with this, have you started yet? You have started, right? You haven't, you, you, okay. So if I were you, right, I have this guy, and the first experiment is, I'm gonna just run this example to see if you can read the same thing. <laughs> all right, see all these voltages, done, check, okay? Um, so if you move it left or right, you are definitely getting a, a number for one direction, but the other direction should be zero. However, if you move it to the northwest, northeast, something like that, so you get values for both channels, right? So they are like information you can use for controlling the car. Um, so what's the second step? <laughs> this is easy, right? Just download it. Copy paste. Boom. 
what do you want to try for the second step? Any ideas? I mean, it's, there's no, you know, absolute answer for this, right? You can do whatever you want. I just want to hear any creative ideas. Yeah, but uh, details about like what, what, where you want to, you want to connect which to where and do what, right? Let's look at the code really quick. So that's a car, that's, that's the main script for the balancing car. And I was trying to look for, this is one of the skills you want to learn, right? So how do you utilize part of other people's code for your application, even though you are not doing the same project? So since I'm trying to uh, take the baby step for this heuristic or for the wireless communication, and I don't even need a data sheet for that, I just open up this script and I can find out, hey, this is the part for, uh, for the remote control. Uh, wait a second, so I need to find out that place. Here, control calculations. So see this, this part. <clears throat> if received byte, I don't even, I don't need to know what's going on here since he probably is using some uh, battery mask do a calculation, but that's fine. But I can see that here is the data received by the wireless module, and he's using that one to calculate a PID value for the controller. But I do, couldn't see anything else, right? It's just like directly using this data. And this data is already received by the wireless module. So, there, so the receiving part must be somewhere else. So it's just trying to look for this variable somewhere else. Received byte. So I just want to know where this was being received or being stored in this variable. So just go up. Here. Serial available. That's so sweet. You don't even need to know like any details about serial communication. RXTX protocol, acknowledgement, anything will be done by this line. So this is the script will be downloaded to where? Where? Uh, where? On the car. So this serial available, so whenever, so there's a serial controller in the Mac controller, right? And it's being connected to so the serial RXTX is being shorted to the wireless module I gave to you. And that module, the PCB, the attendant on the PCB will uh, be in charge of receiving the data and converting to a byte and send it, send it to the microcontroller using TX. So whenever that digital module received that byte from TX from the wireless module, it's, it turns, uh, I think this turns into true, right? So whenever this has something received, it's gonna return a true. So if this, right? So whenever something is received by the Mac controller, then read it and save it into this variable. Right? So this is where this comes from. That's it, data received. That's a receiver, right? Is that simple? It's just a bad, 8-bit battery number. <laughs> All right? What about this uh, transmitter side? So that's a receiver side. What about transmitter side? Those do remember? No, no, that's a, the remote controller is not receiving anything, right? It's just sending it something. Yeah, print, see? That's a remote I just showed you. Print. Just print. So it's gonna print everything, and it's gonna go through the TX from the controller on the remote, on the, uh, on the remote, being connected to the remote. 
and then being received by the Rx pin on the wireless module, and then it's you know being directly converted into a wireless signal and being sent out to the air. And here's the receiver receive it, and I have a serial dot. What? Available, parentheses, waiting there. <laughs> available, yes, available, grab it. <laughs> one line here, one line there, done. You know, since people have making this so simple and easy to use, because there are so many engineering work behind it. That's why these people are being paid at high salary, since they have done everything for you. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's how that works. However, if you are working on this, we're doing, um, after you verify this joystick works, and you want to send some signal from here to the receiver, definitely you need two mic controllers, right? So receiver, uh, you need to connect to your mic controller, and the transmitter, which is like this guy, my controller, wireless module, I'm moving this one, it's receiving some number from 0 to 1023, and then what? Yeah, I think that I think the next step, you just, you just print out the, exactly the same number, don't do any processing, right? If you, if you are showing a 0 or showing a 520, 23, something like that, a random number in between 0 and uh, 1023, just directly send that number to the receiver and see if you can see the same number uh, on the serial monitor on the laptop. Just do that, right? Yeah, whatever, you know, they are identical. Um, so do not process the data, okay? If you are Getting a zero, just send a zero. If you're getting a 500, just send 500. So see if the receiver can receive that uh, correct number. So that's the second step. What about next? It's pretty close, right? Since I can, I can receive something, <laughs> and something I couldn't even see. Is that magical? I think wireless communication is the most magical thing in 21st century, right? Goodness. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can try that. Mm -hmm. And then process the data, right? So when you are getting a zero uh, or you know a, a random number, you probably it's not going to represent the speed of the stepper motor. You want to process it and then send. So I will let you make the judgment where do we want to uh, process the data. Because the Mac controller on the car is working pretty hard to run a PID controller. So I don't know if it has enough power to handle like more processing. It probably can, but you can try, you know, which way will be better option, uh, which is not affecting the computation uh, efficiency, but can still do the job. Uh, either way, you have two mic controllers, so you can do the calculation on either side. Uh, but, you know, depends on which one have a better uh, performance, especially for division operation. It takes a lot of resource on the CPU. So if you have a really heavy division calculation, uh, normally find out uh, somewhere which is have more free time to work on the division. Um, uh, that's how you do the number four of home three, I think. Right? So if you can send a, send a command and run the stepper motor, you are pretty much done. That's what you need to do. Is that clear? Let me see if there's anything else I want to show you. All right, so stepper motors tutorial. How do you work with stepper motor? It's also in this tutorial, the balancing car. On the website, just go to part one. So there are a couple of steps to guide you through uh, running, uh, working with a, uh, a stepper motor. So the first one, I didn't give you a driver like this. Okay, 
I, I have a lot, but after I used it for the first time, I found out it's not a, the best one. I think this is better. So that's why I give you one of these. And it comes with a little heat sink. So the heat sink, I think, is aluminum. If you peel it off and there's a sticker, and you attach the heat sink to the chip on the top, be careful, okay? Because it's metal, do not short any of the parts on the board. They can be shorted easily. Because all the surface mount uh, capacitors, for example, the capacitor has two terminals. In the middle, it's insulator, there's no metal. But on the two sides, there are two metal terminals. And if you put your heat sink on the top, it's going to bridge these two terminals that will short that cap. <laughs> so be careful. Keep it away from the cap. Or any other parts as well. You don't want to short any resistors as well, right? Be careful. Um, and if you watch the video, they probably, so that guy shows you how to adjust the current running through the driver. I didn't do that and I didn't see any problems. Probably because they already adjusted for this type of stepper motor. So the only risk risk is if it's running a lot of current through the driver, probably it's gonna burn the stepper motor. The stepper motor has a current rating, but I think the current rating is pretty high. I think it's safe. Mm. If you really wanna adjust the current, uh, you can do that uh, unless you know what you're doing, right? Okay. Um, yeah, just try some of the examples. So know how to use the driver with the stepper motor. And um, all right, yeah, one thing, one more thing. So the stepper motor's driver requires a 12 volt power supply. I gave you a, I gave you three lipo batteries, right? With a cartridge and with a charger. And the charger can only handle two batteries. Damn, it. <laughs> um, yeah, just charge it twice, second time. So 3.7 for each times three is gonna be 11.1 .1 volts. I think it's fine. Try it, I haven't used that one to power up this type of motor. Uh, probably won't last very long, but I'm. I think you should be able to to get it, make it run. Just won't last long, probably. Uh, if you really want to work in a lab, uh, we have a power supply, a bench top power supply, can use. Um, that's it. And also, this driver module, you know, which one? You are going to put a heat sink on the top. So this chip has a digital logic voltage. So it's a five volts voltage. So V mount, V M O T, that's a driver's voltage to drive the stepper motor, right? But also it has a logic uh, level, which is five volts. Do not connect the 12 volts to here, it's gonna burn it up, burn it down. Uh, and ground it five volts. And directly use the Arduino's five volts to power this up, since it's not requiring a lot of power, the logic, digital logic. But this does require a lot of power. And also it can connect a, a relatively large capacitor between the 12 volts and the ground to remove any voltage uh, spikes, high voltages. Because normally if you plug into somewhere, if it's a, a switch mode a power supply, there will be an inductor, right? So inductor will store a lot of energy. Whenever you plug in, there might be a, a shock, voltage shock. It's gonna be a really high voltage spike. Probably will damage your chip. So that's why you need a capacitor like this. It's a low pass filter. Uh, we will smooth out that spike to protect your chip. So that's uh, what this one does. For a, a deep version, 100 microvolts. It doesn't have to be 100 micro uh, microfarad. I don't have it here right now, but probably I can bring some on Friday. 
for you. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't need to do this. This is for the balancing car, but just for the first uh, like two sections covering the stepper motor, how to use the stepper motor. And you are just doing one, right? Just use the joystick to control one, not two. Right? So this can help with the balancing car project. So complete this one, and we won't have any homework assignments after this, right? So after homework three, you are going to form three groups, three teams, to work on the balancing car project. It probably won't last that really long. Um, we'll see. Probably four weeks or so, including the PCB design. And then we'll have another project and probably another one if we have time. Okay. All right. Any questions? So these are the links the joystick sketch, Arduino, Allegos package, all these things. All right. That's it.